And wow, what a start to the trip. What a start to the trip. Uh, and uh, why don't we, you have that clip, we, Alex? Let's we do. Uh, let, let's uh, just play the clip. Here's Donald Trump uh, actually doing exactly what Vladimir Putin would want him to do. Good morning. In many countries uh, owe us a tremendous amount of money for many years back where they're delinquent as far as I'm concerned because the United States has had to pay for them. So if you go back 10 or 20 years, you'll just add it all up. It's massive amounts of money is owed. Uh, the United States has paid and stepped up like nobody. This has gone on for decades, by the way. This has gone on for many presidents, but no other president brought it up like I bring it up. The good news is that the allies have started to invest more in uh, defense. Uh, after years of cutting defense budgets, they have started to uh, add billions to the defense budgets. And uh, last year was the biggest increase uh, in defense spending across Europe and Canada in a generation. Why was that last year? It's also because of your leadership, because of your clear message. And, uh, and, uh, they won't write that. But they I think uh, it's very sad when Germany makes a massive oil and gas deal with Russia where you're supposed to be guarding against Russia and Germany goes out and pays billions and billions of dollars a year to Russia. So we're protecting Germany, we're protecting France, we're protecting all of these countries. And then numerous of the countries go out and make a pipeline deal with Russia where they're paying billions of dollars into the coffers of Russia. So we're supposed to protect you against Russia, but they're paying billions of dollars to Russia, and I think that's very inappropriate. And the former chancellor of Germany is the head of the pipeline company that's supplying the gas. Uh, ultimately, Germany will have almost 70 percent of their country controlled by Russia with natural gas. So you tell me, is that appropriate? I mean, we've like, been complaining about this from the time I got in. It should have never been allowed to have happened. But Germany is totally controlled by Russia. I think it's something that NATO has to look at. I think it's very inappropriate. You and I agree that it's inappropriate. NATO is an alliance of 29 nations, and uh, there are sometimes differences and uh, different views, and also some disagreements. And the uh, gas uh, uh, pipeline from Russia to Germany is one issue where allies uh, disagree. But the strength of NATO is that despite these differences, we have always been able to unite around our core task uh, to protect and defend each other because we understand that we are stronger together than uh, apart. Uh, I think that two world wars and the Cold War thought was that uh, we are stronger together than apart. Um, but how I can you be together when a country is getting its energy from the person you want protection against or from the group that you want protection against? Because we understand that uh, when we stand together, also when uh, dealing with Russia, we are stronger. I think what we have seen is that... No, you're just making Russia richer. Well, you're not dealing with Russia, you're making Russia richer. Well, so I think that even during the Cold War, uh, NATO allies were trading with uh, Russia. Then there have been uh, disagreements about what kind of uh, trade arrangements we should, uh, we sure. should go I think to. trade is wonderful. I think energy is a whole different story. I think energy is a much different story than normal trade. And you have a country like Poland that won't accept the gas. You take a look at some of the countries, they won't accept it because they don't want to be captive to Russia. Mm. But Germany, as far as I'm concerned, is captive to Russia because it's getting so much of its energy from Russia. Mm. So we're supposed to protect Germany, but they're getting their energy from Russia. Explain that. And it can't be explained, you know. So this was supposed to be uh, just a photo op. Uh, the president wanted to make sure that he sent the message to Vladimir Putin while appearing to question energy shipments to Russia uh, that he was actually doing everything he could to disrupt the NATO summit from the start uh, and to also uh, undermine America's alliance with NATO. You can see, and Mika pointed it out, uh, Mike Pompeo looking down as the president continued to badger an attack, uh, his hosts there. Um, and I, there's so, there's so many, uh, so many places to start. Uh, Ronald Reagan, uh, during, uh, Ronald Reagan, during a decade where he did more to bring down the Soviet Union uh, than anybody would have ever expected, continued to trade with the Soviet Union. Donald Trump 
is just, uh, once again, ignorant of history, ignorant of diplomacy, and ignorant of the very things that have gotten us to a position where we have a $19 trillion economy and by far the most powerful military and economic engine in the world, on the planet. David Ignatius, um, if you listen to Donald Trump uh, ramble on and on about what a bad partner NATO was and what a bad partner the EU was, uh, you would might be fooled in middle America, if you had pictures of Donald Trump on your wall, you might be fooled into believing uh, that Europe does absolutely nothing when it comes to defense. And of course, after us not wanting Germany to rearm for quite some time, we now have a situation where the European Union spends more money on military defense than does Russia. They are an extraordinarily important strategic ally of the United States of America against Vladimir Putin and his ambitions after he's invaded two countries in one decade. You would have no idea watching the president harangue the NATO secretary general that today, at this very minute, there are NATO forces fighting with the United States in Afghanistan in a fight that we requested their help in, that they remain part of the coalition that's seeking to defeat ISIS, our terrorist ally. You would have no idea that that harangue was directed at the people on whom we most depend for military support. That footage that you showed at the beginning of the show ought to be put in a time capsule because if people ask someday, how is it that the NATO alliance, which was the centerpiece of American defense strategy for 70 years, began to unravel, you just look at an American president who arrives and the first thing he does is pick a fight with the very pro-American Secretary, Secretary General Jens Soldenberg mm -hmm. with, as you say, Joe, his American uh, support team, uh, Secretary of State Pompeo and our ambassador to NATO, Kay Bailey Hutchinson, looking on with what seemed to me a kind of silent horror yep. at what was, uh, what was happening. Uh, what an extraordinary way to begin a summit with your friends and allies. Well, hard and to imagine. I, hard to imagine. It, it would be if Churchill and FDR mm -hmm. got together, John Meacham, during World War II and uh, FDR was badgering Churchill for not spending the exact amount of money on outlays in 1944 and 1945 as the United States. The fact is that along with Russia, Great Britain was our closest ally. And here again, we, Europe, again, for those in my family and my friends who support Donald Trump, for those who have ears to hear, hear, Europe spends more money on national defense, on the defense of the EU, than does Russia. Europe spends as much money on the defense of that continent, as does China. They are a strong bulwark against Russian aggression. And with Donald Trump going in and hypocritically attacking them, Germany for, for trading with Russia, when all he has done for the past two years is talk about the need to build closer relationships with Russia, is, is, is just so, such a transparent, and I'm sure he thinks he's being clever, mm -hmm. but it's a transparent way to carry out Vladimir Putin's deepest wish, which is to undermine our alliance with NATO, undercut a military uh, a strategic alliance, that is like a dagger in the heart of Putin's expansionist dreams. It's, it's, it's diabolical in that it almost manages to create as much chaos as possible, not really creative chaos, uh, but create chaos. Because if you listen to that, you know, basically we have a president who sounds like the guy at the end of the bar who has a bee in his bonnet and is on about his third or fourth beer. Norm. And yeah, yeah, Norm is president. Let's become kind to of Norm. Yeah. Uh, but he man but so he's laying this out in a way that his base, many people in his base, will repeat 
because he's saying it. A, they're going to like the idea that he was sitting there talking to this guy with a funny accent. They're going to love that. Mm. Uh, he was telling him what all. And yet, when you pull back and think about what he was talking about, the entire point of the modern era, as David was saying, as opposed to really the, the 20s, which led to the 30s, was we engage. Right. And you engage by with the free flow of people and ideas and goods as much as possible. And what this administration done is, is pretty much, it's against the free flow of people, it's against the free flow of ideas, unless they have them, and it's against the free flow of... So, not Norm, more like Newman. Uh, Mike Barnacle, go ahead. Uh, Nick Burns, Ambassador Burns, former ambassador to NATO, hmm. sitting there watching this extraordinary clip that we just uh, witnessed, the public humiliation of the NATO Secretary General by the President of the United States, it occurs to, I think, all of us here in this set, and I'm wondering how it occurs to you, that this was a president of the United States speaking on a global stage intent only on talking about himself and what he felt rather than the common goals that NATO has held for 70 years. Well, Mike, that's right. And I, frankly, it's just infuriating to watch this happen. You cannot imagine any American president all the way back 75 years, deciding to become the critic in chief of NATO. I mean, it's Orwellian. He's making our, our, our friends out to be our enemies, and he's treating our enemies like Putin as our friends. And he's misrepresenting the facts. There have been four straight years of budget increases by every NATO ally. The great majority of them will be at this magical 2% of gross domestic product level by 2024. All of our ability to project power in the world, in the Middle East, in Afghanistan, comes out of the air bases, Ramstein, Interlick, Aviano, the naval bases in Italy and Spain, that the Europeans pay for. They pay us $2.5 billion a year to keep our forces there. It would cost us more money to bring the troops home than to keep them in Europe. So what is the point of this? It's all about politics and the president's base. It's not about the power of the United States, this incredible alliance that yeah. we built every president from Truman. It's infuriating to see this happen. It's diplomatic malpractice. Thanks for checking out MSNBC on YouTube and make sure you subscribe to stay up to date on the day's biggest stories and you can click on any of the videos around us to watch more for Morning Joe and MSNBC. Thanks so much for watching.